Well, as Edmund Van set out at his speech to the CBI, he very clearly said that a time of great economic instability, when many people are looking for work or wanting to work more hours to make ends meet, when businesses are worried about getting more orders on their uh, you know, books, it's not really a time to introduce even more uncertainty about our membership of the European Union. I also think that foreign investors, Jaguar Land Rover and my own constituency, now owned by uh, in an Indian company, Tata, would think again if they thought we were going to pull out of the EU. We've got to make sure that foreign direct investment is coming from these big economic emerging giants, India, China, Brazil, elsewhere. And so I think to cast uncertainty about our relationship with the EU could really do economic damage uh, in terms of foreign direct investment, in terms of our exports and ultimately in terms of jobs. There is no issue on which public opinion diverges more from parliamentary opinion than the European Union. Survey evidence seems to show the majority of British people would now like to leave the European Union, but only a small minority of Conservative MPs favour that option. Now, I am strongly in favour of Britain staying in the European Union, but pro-Europeans have to win the argument, and the only way you can do that is by taking the argument to the people, not by ignoring popular worries. And my fear is that the longer we delay a referendum, the stronger anti-European opinion will grow because people will say that Europe is a denial of democracy. We ought to remember that we remain in the European community, as the European Union used to be called, because Harold Wilson kept us there in the 1970s with a referendum. It was said that Edward Heath took the establishment into Europe, but it needed Harold Wilson through the referendum to take the British people into Europe. Now the British establishment remains in Europe, but the British people aren't in Europe, and the task of people on the left is to bring them back into Europe, and that can only be done through a referendum. Well, Boris Johnson seemed to suggest that we could be somehow like Norway or Switzerland. Uh, however, at the same time, we'd have membership of the Single Market Council. And I thought this was pretty unrealistic, really, because having uh, been to many European capitals, spoken to many of our European partners in government, um, they say to me, why on earth would uh, the rest of the EU let the UK British business have access to all the benefits of the single market yet not abide by any of the rules. Even Norway has to abide by the rules and doesn't have a say in making uh, the legislation. So I think it is unrealistic to think that we could have a trade only relationship uh, with the UK yet at the same time remain within the single market council. I think of course there is a negotiation every time you decide about the European budget. Uh, I think it is an obvious political internal purpose by the conservative majority in the parliament. But I think that it seems inevitable, but it is not inevitable that you're going to have a referendum. Because of course there is a conservative minority in the parliament asking Mr. Cameron to be bullish, to be uh, decisive against European membership, but I don't think UK can afford uh, Brexit. So I think uh, uh, it's a political issue, I think it's uh, economic negotiations about the EU budget, but at the very end it will be very difficult for Mr Cameron to ask on uh, peculiar referendum, what do British people think about Europe? Because I don't think it could be a referendum about what Europe is really going to be and really going to decide, because a, a British question would not give an European answer.